In WWE, there's only so much room at the top of the card. In the Attitude Era, an era defined by having so many massive stars, there was only ever around six players in the main event scene at any given time. And with the wrestling world filled with more talent today than ever before, with places like AEW, TNA, and even New Japan Pro Wrestling all showcasing world-class pro wrestling on a daily basis, some people just can't reach that brass ring despite being deserving of that position at the top of the card, due to a variety of factors. My name is Green with Wrestleology and today let us take a look back at WWE over the past few years and figure out just how some of WWE's biggest opportunities became some of the company's biggest disappointment. And when looking at WWE's biggest talent failures, it's hard to not look over at Dolph Ziggler as perhaps the biggest example of WWE dropping the ball. Sure, on paper, Ziggler had a Hall of Fame headlining worthy career. Multiple time World Heavyweight Champion, former Mr. Money in the Bank, NXT Champion, Tag Champion, Intercontinental Champion, and more are all in Ziggler's past, and yet he's still not considered as a top star by those in WWE. In fact, he recently just got fired, which for many is insane. Not only were fans desperately behind him throughout his run in the company, but he also had such a flashy style in his presentation that it felt like he had everything he needed to become a big star. He had an exciting moveset, a completely unique look, pretty good mic skills, and it felt like he was the total package, so what went wrong? Well, a couple of things during Dolph's career held him back in WWE. For lack of a better term, WWE had gotten pretty lazy in its bookings in the early 2010s, right around the time Ziggler had started gaining traction with the fans. When fans were clamoring for Ziggler to rise up the card, WWE was perfectly content with not mixing up their main event scene. Unless you were John Cena, Randy Orton, Undertaker, or Batista, you weren't going to main event a pay-per-view. Ziggler had everything needed to become a big star, but WWE sadly just didn't want to switch up that scene. And not only that, but Ziggler was just too small for WWE to take him seriously in the main event. He wasn't a giant like The Big Show, he wasn't jacked like Triple H, and he wasn't small enough for that to become a part of his character like Rey Mysterio. He had an average physique that was just not good enough for WWE at the time, and that kind of saddens me to say. And since WWE wasn't really in the mood to build new stars around the time of Ziggler's rise, he just didn't get any push by the company to become a top star. In a bit of irony as well, Ziggler's incredible skills as a performer might have even slightly harmed his chances in WWE. Since he didn't have a powerful physique like Vince would want, his skills meant that he was always reliable, so he ended up becoming a perfect utility player, great in any role you put him in. Need a guy to feud over the IC title? Just chuck Ziggler in there and he'll put on a good pay-per-view opener. Your planned challenger for a WWE title is injured and you need a quick replacement? Have Ziggler run out there to lose to Cena in a good match. Ziggler is a great WWE superstar, but due to Vince's particular taste in his performers, he just couldn't break through that glass ceiling that always hung above him. And always having him being so close to being a main event player and just not hitting it kind of broke my heart and it sucked. <laughs> Are you worried about your online privacy? Want to access content from all around the world? Well, look no further than Surfshark VPN, today's video sponsor. With Surfshark, you can surf the web securely and anonymously, and they offer military-grade encryption to protect your personal data from hackers and snoopers. Plus, their clean web feature blocks ads, trackers, and malware. The best part? You can use Surfshark on unlimited devices with just one account. That's right, protect your phone, tablet, laptop, and more all at once. Surfshark has servers in over 60 65 countries, giving you access to geo-restricted content from anywhere in the world. Whether it's streaming, gaming, or just browsing, Surfshark makes it possible. Surfshark is offering our viewers an exclusive deal. Click the link in the description and use code GREESH to get an extra three months free, all with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Secure your privacy with Surfshark. So, with that being said, get protected, unlock another country's streaming service library, or just overall feel at peace with Surfshark VPN, and shout out to them for supporting Wrestleology. Thank you, Surfshark. Shark. However, while Ziggler's physique may have held him back in WWE, many saw EC3 as the perfect candidate for being the company's next top star upon his arrival. After failing in the game show version of NXT as Derek Bateman, EC3 went over to Impact Wrestling before completely reinventing himself. During his first stint in the company, he was a curly-haired kid who never had a chance to stand out. But after reinventing himself in Impact, he returned to the black and gold brand completely jacked and with the mic skills to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the biggest names 
in WWE. When he re-entered the promotion, EC3 looked like a guy who could one day become WWE Champion. However, when he was called up to the main roster, a string of bad luck permanently kept EC3 from living up to his true potential. For starters, WWE had the genius idea of practically making EC3 a mute character, barely giving him a chance to speak despite his best assets as a performer coming from his look and promo ability but literally everything else about him screamed money, and yet WWE decided to rip that away from him. And then comes the issue with Dean Ambrose. You see, when EC3 first got called up to Raw, What's it gonna be? Raw? Or SmackDown. He was not only called up alongside five other acts, all whom had their own struggles on the main roster, but he also began a feud with Dean Ambrose. Now, by this point in his career, Dean was set to leave WWE. Hell, WWE even announced that he would be leaving ahead of time, and many fans, including myself, couldn't help but side with Ambrose considering WWE's poor treatment of everybody's favorite lunatic, and with Ambrose being portrayed as the heel to the naturally unlikable EC3, fans were sour with everything EC3 did during his first feud on Raw. This tanked EC3's momentum, with him falling down the card faster than you can say John Moxley is all elite. Of course, Ambrose isn't the only undervalued star from WWE to enter the gates of AEW. WWE legends like Chris Jericho, Big Show, and more have all entered AEW. But while those names may have been world champion before in WWE, Rusev was always struggling to grab that elusive brass ring during his time in the promotion. Of course, Rusev was handed a fair amount in the early days of his career, and in fact, it seemed like Rusev was destined for success given his unique frame and explosive in-ring style. And with Lana standing next to him, it felt like nothing could stop Rusev. He even entered his first WrestleMania match on the back of a tank, intimidating a high-profile opponent in John Cena. But following his first loss to Cena, Rusev would fall down the card as a mid-card player for the company, never really getting a second chance at the main event scene. Rusev even managed to get himself over again years later alongside Aiden English with this whole Rusev Day stunt and Rusev seemed like he had everything he needed to get over, proving that he could get the crowd invested on multiple occasions, whether he was playing the role of a villain or a hero. Yet WWE just never invested in him. Sure, he was handed a few US title runs, but Rusev never really felt like the big player he seemed destined to become. It felt like whenever Rusev would start to get the crowd behind him, WWE would just swoop in and trip him up right at the finish line. He was never handed a top title shot, instead being fed awful storylines such as the one with the League of Nations, or when WWE tried to split up Lana and Rusev with just about anyone they could find, Dolph Ziggler, Enzo Amore, Bobby Lashley, even The Rock all took a few jabs at the couple while hitting on Lana. Vince infamously hated their backstage relationship, with them even being punished by the company for getting engaged. And so, no matter how legitimate and interesting Rusev was as a person, WWE just kept getting in the way of his progression. After his debut year in the company, despite proving time and time again how valuable he can be, Rusev was just never trusted or loved enough by WWE to reach his potential as a big star, and he headed off to AEW, where he's at nowadays, being known as Miro, and even then, I think that people complain that he's not being used right over there either. And that's actually a pretty similar story to our next superstar we'll talk about today. Wade Barrett's biggest career highlight actually came during his entry into the WWE. Wade Barrett concluded the June 7th, 2010 edition of Raw with one of the biggest debut angles in the show's history, leading a group of all the other contestants from the first season of NXT, Wade formed the Nexus, which proceeded to destroy the entire ringside area of Raw before beating down on WWE's top stars for the next few months. However, the Nexus fiddled out over the next year of programming, losing to Team WWE at SummerSlam before Wade would lose to all those big names that were once victims of the Nexus. From there, the group split with Wade leading The Core over on SmackDown before that too fizzled out just as CM Punk was disbanding the rest of the new Nexus on Raw. And then from there, Wade hung around the Intercontinental title scene, constantly fighting to gain the attention of WWE's higher-ups, and eventually Wade would reignite the fanbase with a new gimmick. Wade became a more comedic heel in the form of Bad News Barrett, constantly arriving to spoil everyone's fun. And while fans reacted more positively to this change, it wasn't enough for those in WWE to consider Wade a top player in the promotion. He was eventually released by WWE in 2015, before returning as a play-by-play -play commentator. So like Rue 
Rusev earlier, Wade had seemingly all the tools needed to become a top player. He had an eye-catching look and the presence that screamed to the fans that he could be a main event player. And at first, it felt like WWE saw that as well, with him immediately positioned as the leader of the Nexus. However, following WWE's own fumble with the Nexus story, watching it slowly burn over the course of a year, it seemed like the company just chose to slowly kill Wade's potential rather than admit their own failures. Despite Wade getting the crowd behind him on multiple occasions across multiple gimmicks, WWE still chose not to reward that work, almost punishing him for having the audacity to get himself over. Which is the same story as many of the others we've talked about so far. You arrive in WWE with the company desperately trying to be reasonable for your potential success, only for you to be punished when you're able to get over without the company's help. Sure, some people like Daniel Bryan and Becky Lynch were able to push past this, getting so over that WWE was practically forced to listen, but that doesn't always work. However, the true irony is that while you have guys like Barrett and Ziggler consistently being pushed down the card despite their organic popularity, WWE are still trying to make stars. The only issue is that the only people to be handed opportunities are the ones that they allow. But even with WWE's best intentions, sometimes they can still end up mishandling the talent they want in the main event picture. So in WWE, superstars come in all shapes and sizes. That is, if WWE provides you with the right tools to break through the glass ceiling. Guys like the ones we just mentioned are just proof that without WWE's help, it's hard for a superstar to grow in the company. Sure, it seems like wrestlers have more freedom these days, with guys like Sami Zayn and Jey Uso finally getting their chance at the spotlight, but a lot of people in the past have not been afforded that luxury. We could talk all day about the people who have failed in WWE, and I'm more than willing to create a part 2 to this video if you guys want, but I think these names prove that success in WWE is not a guaranteed thing. While people like Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode seemed like guaranteed main event superstars, there are many factors as for why things can go wrong, whether it's because of WWE's poor material or due to you just pissing off the wrong guy backstage, it's clear that to make it in WWE, you have to be at the top of your game. The glass ceiling for a long time felt like it was made of concrete for the names on the list, however with changes being made every day to the backstage inner workings of WWE, especially with Vince McMahon leaving and Triple H now taking charge, perhaps those people who deserve to rise up the card in the company will finally be able to do so. If you enjoyed, make sure you go ahead, drop a like, and subscribe.